Sleep is relevant to the health of our body and our brain. The functions of the brain and the body are enhanced with enough sleep and impaired by inefficient sleep. Welcome to Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast. I am your host, Dr. Weta L. Brown. I inspire and promote movement. I explain how running adds to life from a mental wholeness aspect. How obstacles can be overcome in life to make it to your finish line. Welcome to Running is Cheaper Than Therapy, podcast episode 80. Today, I'm going to talk about something that's simple, although complex. We're going to talk about the importance of sleep. I know that many people are guilty of this, not only athletes, but just everyday people. Life is hectic with all our responsibilities and it's hard to get everything done, nearly impossible with my list. And oftentimes sleep is the first thing that is neglected in order to get things done. I personally have been sleep deprived for years. I think in high school, maybe I actually got a good night's sleep. College, trying to be a stellar student, trying to pledge, trying to have a social life, and also being involved in a lot of other activities. I neglected a lot of sleep. I remember the semester I pledged, trying to cram for my exams at the end of the semester my junior year. It was fall 1993. I remember one of my classmates was supposed to meet me in the lab. I was in physical therapy school. So I was studying for a um, anatomy test. So she was supposed to meet me in a cadaver lab. So it was me and I don't know how many cadavers in there. Someone had left the radio on really low. And I thought, oh, my God, are the bodies haunted? What am I hearing? Being sleep deprived and trying to study. And then the radio was on. And I finally figured out it was a radio, not the dead bodies, that they were really dead and had nothing to worry about. So I was locked in an anatomy lab. That same week, I went to take my practical with Dr. Bell. May he rest in peace. And he looked at me and he said, you look bad. Do you want to take your test later? I was like, oh, no, let me get this over with. And then I remember the semester after I pledged. I'm type A plus, and I made straight B's, and they might have not been the highest B's. That might have been my lowest average in college because I was doing so much and had so many activities. And I like being involved, and I like doing the best I can in everything I, I put my mind to do. So I was trying to do well in school. I was trying to do well in all my organizations. I was trying to be a great adult, and I was also a step, and so it was a lot going on, a lot of stress. After undergrad, graduating and starting my career, I actually, I got some sleep working as a physical therapist initially, then I decided to go back to medical school, so I was trying to work, study for the MCAT, applied to medical school, so sleep took a back burner, and don't get me to talking about medical school. Between studying and after second year when we start doing rotations, being on call, it's, it's hard to regulate your sleep when, say, every third night you don't get any sleep. Or you may get a couple hours of interrupted sleep, but it wasn't enough to sustain you. I remember my spine rotation. There's only one resident on spine. And this was before they had regulations on how long a resident could work and things of that nature. So for that block, which was about four, three to four months, I had to go to the hospital every day. I remember one morning I was walking to the hospital and I swear I was sleepwalking because I, I hit something with my foot. 
I was chronically sleep deprived. So fast forward to life now between work. I am single, so I don't have the responsibilities of, let's say, a husband and kids. But with work and trying to train, although I don't have any races, but I take my training seriously. So I work out six days a week, sometimes do two workouts, and then I'm still going to physical therapy one to two times a week. Then my passion project that started during COVID, this podcast, takes a lot of my time as well. Not to mention um, just normal life, cleaning your house, grocery shopping, cooking, and trying to be healthy takes a little bit more effort in order to cook. Washing clothes, trying to have a social life. That's a lot. And that I've been focusing the last two weeks on trying to get at least seven hours of sleep, which is hard because I don't like going to bed early. So I was doing good until last night. I went to the pool to swim after physical therapy because physical therapy, I feel like, is, is extra. It's not one of my workouts, although it's more strengthening. And sometimes I can run on the treadmill so I can knock off my run because I'm doing a return to run program. So I went to bed at midnight, got up at four so I can get my bike ride in. Started work at 5.30. Then I had an appointment. I started early, so I had an appointment at 2.30. And then rushed to get home because I had a podcast interview. So, and then I still need to do my run. So I'm sleep deprived. And I can tell the difference today and how I feel compared to when I get my seven hours of sleep. I found in the last three years, I'm getting sick more often. And I believe it's because... I don't get enough sleep and I stress my body with work and training. And if you don't get proper sleep, your body doesn't properly heal. It doesn't, you don't get the proper immune response. So we all know about the pandemic 2020. I had COVID. It took me about a month to get back to quote unquote normal. But I still was like, I felt I had poor endurance, particularly hard bike rides. I felt like I was out of breath. I haven't had COVID, but I've had a some bad colds, sinus infection. Um, I've been sick like four or five times in the last few years, like three or four weeks of sickness. And I believe it's because I don't get enough rest, particularly when I go out of town. I don't get enough sleep because I'm always up packing late. And then when I'm out of town, either it's a different time zone, I don't get enough sleep. And then when I come home, I feel like I'm playing catch up. So it's a cycle that... It's hard to break, but I want to talk about the importance of sleep, particularly an endurance athlete. You wouldn't think about, you think about killing your workouts. You think about most endurance athletes have what's called training peaks and workouts loaded in there. So you want to make all of your workouts green. If you don't, you miss a workout, it's red. If you don't do the workout like you're supposed to, it's yellow. But yellow and green are good. Red is bad. And it, I used to stress me out, but never miss a workout. And I still try not to miss a workout. I might readjust my schedule or if it calls for, say, an hour and 15 minutes, like this morning I did, an hour ride versus an hour and 15 minutes um, because I didn't want to get up before 4 o'clock. So the importance of sleep is our topic for today. Sleep is relevant to the health of our body and our brain. The functions of the brain and the body are enhanced with enough sleep. And impaired by inefficient sleep. You know those days where you can't concentrate, where you can barely keep your eyes open and you're trying to work. The CDC actually has declared sleep deficiency a public health crisis. In our world of hustle and bustle, a lot of people neglect sleep. Sleep enhances your memory, makes you more creative. It lowers food cravings. If you're up, say... Out of 24 hours, you're up, say, 20, like I was yesterday. I was starving, and I'm trying to um, lose COVID plus surgery weight. So being up late, getting up early morning, and being active, my appetite sometimes is high, and sometimes I don't have the best food cravings. Sleep protects you from dementia, cancer, wards off colds, flu. It helps 
increase your immune system. Lowers the risk of heart attack and stroke, not to mention diabetes. It helps you have a better mood, research has shown. Additional sleep is critical for psychological health, neurological health, learning, again, memory, lowering blood pressure, metabolic function, temperature regulation, steady hormone levels, recovery, grow muscles and repair tissue. Insufficient sleep can lead to heart disease, stroke, cancer, immune deficiencies. It's been shown that it can lead to mood disorders, which can lead to depression, poor learning skills, behavioral problems, weight gain, elevated heart rate. So as an athlete, if you have Insufficient sleep, you struggle with fatigue and you lack endurance. And also some people who may think that they get proper sleep may have what's called sleep apnea and may not realize it. So you're not getting that heavy REM sleep, which your body needs. So you may sleep, say, seven hours, but you may not feel rested when you wake up. So as you sleep, the heart rests, cells and tissue repair. And it helps your body recover, particularly when you're doing hard workouts. So say if you're training for an, a marathon, you're training for a triathlon, particularly long distance, and you're putting a lot of hours in, you're breaking your body down, and you need rest and recovery in order for it to properly heal and to get the benefits of your workout. Dr. James, a few episodes ago, mentioned due to her hectic schedule, being a wife, a mother of three, emergency room physician, and um, training, seriously training for um, races. And she often neglects to sleep. Since she's been on sabbatical, she's been getting seven to ten hours of sleep, and she can really tell the difference in her recovery. Again, I mentioned preventing illness. During sleep, your body produces cytokines, which are hormones, that help fight, again, the immune system and fight off infections. And we all know when we get a cold, we get sick, and we can't train. <laughs> and my crazy behind oftentimes tries to, or if I do try to rest and I lay in bed or on the couch or whatever and think about all the things I need to do, so I'm really not resting at all. And also, some things you may not think about, if you don't get proper sleep and say you're training your you're learning to swim, you're training for a triathlon. Sleep helps your body retain and consolidate memories. So if you're practicing a new skill, sleep helps formulate memory. So if you're not getting proper sleep, you may not remember all the technical aspects. Particularly, I remember when learning how to swim, okay, stroke here. Especially we deal with all these drills. Okay, this this drill. Okay, remember this. Uh, okay, I got to breathe uh, every three strokes. Um, it's like a lot of things to think about. I think a little bit less, but I still think about some technical things because swimming is very technical. In season five, we will continue the segment as the doc. If you have any questions related to musculoskeletal health, please email me, send me a message via social media, or click on my website and leave an audio message. Select messages will be answered on the segment. Some recent studies regarding sleep. A Stanford study of men basketball players who extended their sleep to 10 hours a night found several positive outcomes. The players ran faster in both half-court and full-court sprints. Their shooting improved at least 9% for both free throws and three-point shots. The athletes also improved physical and mental well-being. Another study with male and female swimmers who extended their sleep to 10 hours also saw performance improvements. The times off of the diving blocks were faster. Turn times improved. Kick stroke increased. Their time doing uh, a meter sprint improved. Additionally, athletes experience improved mood and decreased daytime sleepiness and fatigue. 
Another study of varsity tennis players, male and female, who increased their sleep to at least nine hours, also performed better. Their serve accuracy increased significantly from 36% to 42%. One other study with female netball players and male soccer players demonstrated that sleep hygiene education helped athletes increase their overall sleep time. And their increased sleep encouraged top performance. Another study of male team sports athletes who were sleep deprived and their total sprint times decreased. Another study, female tennis players had decreased accuracy up to 53% when compared to performance after normal sleep. Quicker exhaustion in a study of male runners and volleyball players they had increased exhaustion at a faster rate when they were sleep deprived. Players who had insufficient sleep had decreased reaction times. And players, again, who did not get proper sleep had a higher number of injuries. So studies have shown that endurance athletes need 7 to 10 hours of sleep. Elite and professional athletes need more. So let me give you some tips, some sleep hygiene tips for athletes or for anyone. So it's important to create an appropriate sleep environment. Your sleeping environment should be dark, cool, with little to no noise. Your sleep environment should only be used for sex and sleep. So people who sleep with television on, Radio on. Avoid alcohol and caffeine before bedtime. They can interrupt your sleep and lead to a more disturbed sleep. You don't get proper REM sleep as we talked about before. Stay away from electronics in the hours before bedtime, which is hard for me because I'm always on my phone. And when I get home and kind of relax, cook some dinner, eat food, and then I watch TV. And also may do some work on the podcast, or, but I'll have TV in the background. It's usually just background noise, but that has been shown to stimulate people and it's harder to fall asleep if you have electronics, television, phone, video games for people who play video games. The blue light can affect your circadian rhythm as well. Another um, recommendation is have a wind down activity. Such as reading, taking a bath, or meditating to get ready for sleep. Another suggestion, which I haven't heard, is if you can't fall asleep after about 20 minutes of trying, get out of bed. Do a quiet activity in another space until you feel sleepy. Other sleep hygiene tips. Avoid overtraining, which is so hard. Um, and it also, which is one reason I have a coach because oftentimes I want to PR every workout and I tend to do too much. I'm a little bit better at listening to my body because I've had so many injuries. So I'm better than I was before, particularly when I first started running. I remember the first running coach I had, I showed all my races and uh, my schedule and all the injuries I had. And she looked at my schedule and she's like, that's why you're injured because you do too much and you never rest. I've learned since then because I started running in 2010, long distance. And um, I've had a plethora of injuries. If you know me or if you've listened to my podcast or read my book, you know I've had a significant number of injuries. Another tip, which is sometimes hard in our busy schedule, is avoid training too late or too early. That's just what I did this morning. This can affect your sleep quality and quantity, particularly if you have inconsistent schedules, which I do. Like say a Monday, you get up at four to do your workout. Tuesday, you may sleep to eight. So your body doesn't get into a fine rhythm. If you take naps, which I love naps, I love naps, make them brief. They should be no more then an hour and not taken after 3 p.m. Reduce stressors. Not only do stressors affect sleep quality, but they also impact your performance overall. 
And this was something that was really interesting. Jet lag and athletes. Because we all, so we travel for races or we travel. I travel all the time. I just got back from Atlanta from doing a bike ride. So when traveling to a different time zone for competition or if you're doing an event, I wasn't competing last week. I did a bike ride. and um, But I also travel more so different time zones when I'm skiing. So when you travel in a different time zone, it throws you off of your normal circadian uh, rhythm. So you have fatigue, inability to perform at your best, which is mentioned if you um, are a football fan, you know, I am, if you know me, when say East Coast teams have to travel to the West Coast to play a game, they usually have more fatigue than that, their home team because they're used to their time zone and traveling wears you out as well, particularly when people like me who fly commercial. It's a hassle. You gotta get to the airport and it's better to get an early flight because with all the cancellations, it's usually the first flight of the day. It's not the one that's canceled. So trying to pack, get to the airport. I never get enough sleep before I go out of town. And then when you get to where you're going, you're jet black. So it's like a double whammy. So the key is preparation. So try to Pack early, maybe do a little bit a day. Adjust your sleep schedule to try to mimic the time zone that you're traveling to. Another tip that they recommend um, in this article is set your watch for the destination time zone when you board the plane. And get enough sleep before traveling, which I just mentioned, to avoid sleep debt upon arrival, which I usually have plenty of that. I try to go to bed before, and I usually sleep on the plane. So I try to get a window seat. And I do have, I'll either cover my eyes or I'll just put a jacket over my head so one people won't bother me and to um, block out the light. They also recommend um, earplugs, which I usually have my headphones on. I guess those are my earplugs, my noise cancellation. That also keeps most people from bothering you. Stay hydrated, which is kind of hard. Just on the airplane, I personally don't like using the restroom on an airplane, but Avoid caffeine and alcohol and stay hydrated will help with your sleep and as well as not being so fatigued and exhausted. If anyone else has any helpful sleep tips or recommendations, because I am a work in progress, I'm really trying to be better at getting at least seven to 10 hours of sleep because I've been guilty particularly when I have a lot going on and I'm trying to squeeze everything in and neglect and sleep. And then I'll try to make it up on the weekend and it never happens. And I feel like I'm always behind and I'm always tired and I can't stand feeling so fatigued. Another thing, if you're chronically fatigued and you are getting sleep, you may need to check with your primary care doctor because it could be a reason that you're fatigued. Anemia, just stress, could be low B12, so if you're chronically fatigued, make sure you see your primary care doctor, get a set of labs. The low vitamin D can also cause fatigue. So thanks for uh, listening to the podcast. And again, if you have any recommendations, any um, articles, any suggestions, any other suggestions that I did not mention, contact me either via my website or social media because... We want to do everything possible to be the best at our sport. And oftentimes that includes rest, although sometimes it seems counterintuitive. That wraps up this episode of Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast. Thank you for tuning in. If you already haven't, please download Running is Cheaper Than Therapy podcast on Apple, Spotify, or however you listen to your favorite podcast. If you have any questions, concerns, or possible show topics, please email Running is Cheaper Than Therapy, OLB, Omaha Love Brown. Again, that's Running is Cheaper Than Therapy, Omaha Love Brown at gmail.com. I also can be reached via Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Handle We Life, We Love. OUI Life, OUI Love. Thank you, and please tune in again.